So now I found a cropping that I like and I want to make sure they all play the way I like. I, I moved one of the frames over a little bit because I didn't like how it was working. And the way we figure that out is using window, timeline, frame animation, make frames from layers. I'm going to reverse the order of my frames. Select them all. I'm going to set them all to be half a second long and play it through forever and then see if anything jumps out at me as... Ah, do you see it? Haha. <laughs> so at the bottom, I lose a little bit right here. So those frames. So then I need to crop it again because the limiting factor now is that height. I tried to go a little bit broader, but I can't quite. I need to be limited to this. So now this is my new cropping. Play it through. Make sure that none of that, that blank grid shows in the background. Feels like the egg is cracking. It's opening up. It's getting destroyed. Yeah, and I'm not so bothered by this anymore because you have the visual mass there, and then that visual mass is kind of continued instead of regathering. Okay, good. Now, all the hard work is done. Now I just need to process it. But instead of processing a single exposure, I am now processing the whole stack. And so the easiest way to do that is to go to your very top layer and then just add adjustment layers on top of that. So first levels. I want to go to layer, new adjustment layer, levels. And now this will affect every exposure underneath. So I can deepen the shadows maybe just a tiny bit. I want to be um, not too heavy handed in this because it's going to affect every other exposure, not just this top one. Okay, and to see how that looks, I press play and make sure that no exposure looks totally um, unbalanced now due to my levels adjustment. Very nice. Now, let me do another one. Layer, new adjustment layer, color balance. Want it to feel like the earth, so I really want to play up the blues and the cyans. But I want the yellows to pop as well. I'll usually cool down my shadows a little bit and warm up my highlights. All right, let's see how this looks. And you can also see it frame by frame this way too, instead of just playing it. Now it looks too orange. Put some of those greens back in there. So these shifts might be subtle. They have to work for all exposures. My little blue planet's still there. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, so let's play it through. Now I have a levels adjustment and a color balance adjustment. Now I'm going to play with hue saturation. I'm going to play with the yellow a little bit. It's find it a little off-putting for some reason, the color of it. 
So now my last layer adjustment is going to be hue saturation. And I'm going to select out the yellow in particular. Brighten up its hue, desaturate it a little bit. Maybe even darken it a tiny bit so it doesn't feel so yolky. Instead, it could be more like the crust of the earth. If I wanted to, I could change it completely. But I don't want to change it completely. I just want to deaden it a little bit. Yeah, I like that. So it doesn't overshadow all the other colors. In that same way, I might heighten the blues just a tad. Just a touch. So I can go up to my blues. And a little extra saturation. Not a lot, maybe push them a little bit darker. Now that's good, but it feels like the reds are a little underrepresented, so I'm going to go back to my color balance layer. And this is what I love about adjustment love layers, is I can always go back and I'm going to push the midtones just a little bit close more towards red again. That's too much red. A little bit less. All right. So now I'm happy with the color processing, the value processing, and I think all of the, the different movements look good. They all work well in the square composition. So now I'm going to save that. These are my exposures for assignment 11, all stacked together and processed, so as a PSD. Now to save it as an animation, I need to change the image size. And I'm going to make it 8 inches by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. Now the reason that's smaller than our print size is because a GIF animation like this is made only for showing on screens. And screen resolution is a standard of 72 pixels per inch. So this is more than twice as good as it needs to be to show up on a standard screen. Now remember, I've already saved my Photoshop file. This is just to output um, my, my animation. And then I say, File, save for web, and it will give me my animation options. And this will write the animation code into the file so that when it's put online, like in the photo bucket or onto a website, it will automatically play back. I'm seeing it at 100% resolution right now. The problem with GIFs, which are the only online file that can animate without any special um, software like Flash or special interface, they are limited in their number of colors. So these are the, the options I like to use. Selective color, the maximum number of colors they can know are, or uh, remember are 256. You could also try perceptual color. And then I like to have it at a quality that's bicubic smoother. And I can play it and you can see what it does to the color. 
and it is lower resolution for sure, but it will look plenty good on the computer screen. This is just for the animation. All right, when you're done, you say save, and you're going to save it to the desktop as this GIF, G-I-F. And it will have the animation script already built into it. So now, I can test it by opening it up in an internet browser. Doesn't matter which one. I choose Safari because I don't ever use it for anything. Make it feel special. Of course, it's taking a long time to open. Also, your, your animation file, it's six megabytes, which isn't very big, but it's big for an online image, which are usually just in kilobytes. But here you'll see it. Yeah, I do not like the perceptual color. I'm going to go back to selective color. But that's how it works. So let me change it. Now, that's why we keep it as a Photoshop file at full size so that we can try different options here. So I'm going to change it to selective color instead of perceptual. And overwrite my existing one. All right, now we're going to do another step. This is after we've shrunken it, and I am going to go to the, the frame properties, and I will say I will select all of them, and I will say um, copy frames, and then I will say paste frames, and I will paste them after the selection. And then I will take that new selection of frames and I will reverse their order, reverse frames. Now in this way, I can have the animation play forward and backwards to truly be a loop. So first the egg will get destroyed. And then it will be like the, the big bang. And it will bring everything back together. Very fun. And then it will start all over again. And if I want to save that for the web, as long as it's not 200 frames or something ridiculous like that, I could still keep the same size, 8 inches by 8 inches, 150 pixels per inch. Use these same settings and just save it as a different name. And I will call this my animation loop. And that's what I'll put up to Photo Bucket because I like it when it plays forward and backwards for mine. That might not always work for yours, but if it does, it's a nice way to have it just loop as it plays. Okay, now what do I do with the Photoshop file? I have all these layers, but I am not going to save the PSD like this. I wanted it saved before I shrunk it. So if you didn't save it before that, you want to save it before you change the image size, where it's still at full resolution and plays through cleanly. So that's my PSD. So I have my PSD that I'm doing everything from, and I have my, my looping animation. which I can test in, it, in an internet browser. Then I can close everything and we'll start from there with the storyboard.